Welcome to a Celtic State of Mind. I'm Paul John Dykes and I will be joined by Kevin Graham after yet another disappointing performance by Celtic. Um, yes, the last week has been tough on the club, on the players, on the management, on everyone associated with Celtic Football Club. But we've gone into tonight's game and we try to pull as many positives as possible from the selection, you know, a forced selection, putting in some players who were going to make their debut, for example, Cameron Happer. Were you happy with his performance? He was replaced by Oka Flex, who uh, didn't have a great deal of involvement in the game, but once again, we were unable to hold on to a lead. I have... In the past, this season, been critical of our fitness levels. That's now 16 goals in the last 20 minutes of the game that Celtic have conceded. Um, That is astounding, you know. So we go into the game and you're sitting there at one nothing, thinking to yourself that after the week Celtic have had, you know, if we came out of that game and we haven't lost any more ground on Rangers, then that's a fantastic result at one nothing. When you're looking at the reason we were ahead, uh, an individual piece of absolute genius by David Turnbull, who's fastly becoming the most influential player, the, the most creative player in the Celtic side. Um, and then, you know, th- that was at 81 minutes, but unfortunately we were beaten once again by a simple ball into the box. And up until that point, I had felt that uh, Duffy and Welsh had dealt with most of what had been thrown at us. Um, unfortunately, again, it was like a rerun in the Scottish Cup final because Hazard came out for the cross and flapped at it. Uh, that was uh, again it was uh, reminiscent of what happened in the cup final and unfortunately Nisbet was able to capitalise on that so we'll go to Kevin Graham to hear what his thoughts are on you know a second half Kevin which I felt looked very much like one of these end of season games that you get where it's all getting played you know very one paced there's a lot of guys coming on for an appearance Um, even though you know we're only in January (laughs) Um, and this historic season what was meant to be a memorable season but it did have that kind of tempo didn't it it was uh, one of the matches that came to life through the you know the absolute individual brilliance of Turnbull sum up that second half for me tepid rubbish Um, it was as you say it had all the the pace and all the power there an end of season game and we scored a great goal we scored an absolutely fantastic goal the only way that we were going to score all night I mean if I was a Hibs fan I would be utterly bemused how they hadn't came away with three points we were there for the taking for the majority of that second half and you just knew it. You just absolutely knew it when Waxalt gave away that free kick. That was coming. That was in the post. The way, the way, our, the, the way our season's been gone. And that's my problem. We can't see a game out. The game management's poor. Everything's poor. I'm not going to blame the players on the pitch tonight. I'm not going to blame the players on the pitch tonight at all. Even though I'm not going to blame them to start off with. Hazard was absolutely a nightmare for the goal. Just mm. when I was thinking about making him man of the match. Shane Duffy, that was a powder puff clearance standing on the line and Max Salt for gaining away the free kick. Otherwise, we've done nothing for the whole of that second half. We didn't. We probably struggled to deserve a point, truthfully. But I'm not going to blame the players. I'm not. If we haven't got Neil Ledger and, and Peter Wall's resignation by tomorrow morning, they can away and they can away and chase it. They can away. There's only two guys to blame for our league season absolutely ending in tatters on the, the 11th of January at 21:42, and it's Peter Lennon. It's Peter Lennon. Oh, Jesus Christ! It's Neil Lennon and, 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 and Peter Wall. They have to take responsibility for this season. They've got to take responsibility for this season. If they didn't take responsibility for this season, it's like bloody Fred West saying he wasn't into home improvements. They have got to take responsibility. Well, you know, before the game, Kevin, whereby we've spoken all about the Dubai debacle, which is one in a great number of things that have happened this season. This has been, you know, we've stumbled from one catastrophe to another. It started off with ball and goalie, thinking it was a good idea to breach every single protocol in the COVID book and fly away to Spain for reasons only known to himself. There were team sheets being leaked 
uh, you know, Griffiths unfit until December, players wanting out according to Neil Lennon, there had to be a culture change according to Neil Lennon, and then we, you know, had the, the Dubai fracas, which was, you know, just the latest in a number of insults to the Celtic support. And I feel that, uh, you know, taking ownership of that, taking responsibility of what has happened this season is something that Celtic as a football club have failed to do. And I've been critical of the lack of engagement from the club. It continues. It absolutely continues. Everything you get from Celtic these days is one way. So we hear nothing from them for, for weeks on end. And when we do, it's normally a statement that, you know, comes across, like Andy Walker said at the beginning of the game, comes across arrogant. This is the way it is. Accept it. You know, we're not taking responsibility. We're not going to apologise to anybody uh, for what we've done. Just accept it. You know, that's not going to change, Kevin. And even if it does now, it will feel contrived. It does. And it's, and it's, and it's far too late. Far, far too late. Um, I think we've got Harry Hill to actually do the narration of the end of season DVD. Yeah? I, think that, I think that actually deserves it. Uh, oh, it's just... Absolutely gut wrenching. It is absolutely gut wrenching. I mean, I was I was kind of positive before the start of the game, but you end up dropping two more points. Even if we'd have got three points, it was just pushing the it was just pushing the cart further down, further down the road before it was going to end. It's now ended. Dubai has absolutely knackered this season. Absolutely put a absolutely put the lid on it. And we're going to still sit here, and what we're going to do for now at the end of the season, hopes are unharmed. Hope, hopefully, that uh, we get enough positives for now at the end of the season to actually keep us coming back. And it, uh, it's, see it's the thing, hard, see the uh, thing, Kevin. I am constantly combating a, a group of like-minded Celtic fans who, whose heads are firmly stuck in the sand. They believe that the situation we are in is the result of podcasts like us. It's the result of the media having a, de- a vendetta against Celtic. It's the result of poor um, officials within the game. Now, at the end of the day, even if all of that is true, and the only thing I can say with any certainty that isn't true is that there's no vendetta from a Celtic state of mind, or indeed any Celtic podcast, because we've had contact with most of them, Kevin, over the last you know number of years. There's absolutely no vendetta. And I just think, you know, anyone who calls it out the way they see it and anyone who criticises the club are doing the fans a favour rather than turning their back on a club. I mean, I was called a hun tonight on Twitter. I mean, people really need to get real. They need to get real. Celtic have been the architects of our own demise. Look at that horrific chain of events from ball and golly right up until going into a game against Hibs 13 players down because of our own fault and being unable and unwilling to actually accept that it's our fault as a football club and coming out and apologising to people, Kevin, who have put in their hard-earned cash to watch a stream all season. You know, because what I was saying uh, yesterday is that that's same board that have treated Celtic fans with nothing but contempt will be coming back to us with a begging bowl soon enough asking for us to renew a season ticket. What belief? I, I am a Celtic supporter, but the people who are at the helm of this club at the moment are running it into the ground. It's, it's in the ground, eh? It's already there. How amazing, of a, how amazing and spectacular a crash is this? This is unfathomable. If somebody gave you a script of this is going to happen this season, you would laugh at it. You go, that's too far fetched. If somebody came 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 to you with this as a draft of a book, you would go, that's never going to happen. I mean, what's going to happen next? I mean, uh, what is going to? Nothing else is going to surprise me this season. Nothing else is going to surprise me this season. What, what, what's going to happen? But, uh, we just feel like we're. We're going round in ever decreasing circles. Now it's over. The season is officially over on the 11th of January. We need change. We need change now. We need to change three months ago. Yeah. 
And what happens though, Kevin, is you say that at the time and somehow people manage to create this situation where by saying it, you've caused it. The signs were clear before we started saying it on the podcast. I think the goodwill that had been built up by Neil Lennon, by a team that went on to win a quadruple treble, that goodwill prevented you from saying it earlier. There were people coming onto this podcast, Anthony from Four Tims in a Pod, right after the Rangers defeat at Celtic Park, saying that Neil Lennon should go. Loads of people disagreed with him. And on that particular day, I felt that he was being a wee bit premature with, with that assertion. It finally hit me uh, at Pataudry at half time, where we threw away a two goal lead. We continually throw away leads. Tonight, that individual piece of brilliance by Turnbull was emphatic. It was incredible. It almost, you know, got us out of jail. Because as you say, Kevin, nothing much was happening in the second half of that game. And you're looking around thinking, you know what, it's, it's been a, a bit of a putrid uh, performance today, but you're, you're relying on young guys coming in, like Henderson, Oco Flex, uh, Dembele, to come in and, and get a result. And I was think, sitting there thinking, you know, if we come away and we're still 19 points behind, at least we haven't lost any ground. Rangers you know, exceeded the goal difference by a goal, we've won by a goal. At least we haven't lost any further ground. All the mitigating circumstances around Celtic's demise this season, you've got to take them into account, of course you do. We've been hit terribly by COVID, partly um, our own fault, particularly on the Dubai front. But we've been hit terribly by injuries, of course we have. We went out and signed six players, very few of them have come to fruition, very few of them could be described as good signings, Kevin. But it comes down to the manager, it comes down to the recruit it comes down to Peter Lowell and that's the, a man who is, has no intention of coming and engaging with the Celtic fans and as I said earlier on today I'm not talking about coming and doing this interview on a Celtic state of mind no engagement whatsoever not interested the arrogance is unbelievable at this club at the moment again no argument whatsoever from me I mean what did you feel when you saw, when you saw Peter Lowell's face appearing in that second half well, you're looking at someone like Peter Lowell and you think, we are now staring at a season of potentially no trophies. Now, you're staring at Peter Lowell's legacy. Well, exactly. And because when you think about times in the past when a period of domination has ended, you think about the season where Vim Janssen was in charge, Kevin, and, and we won the league in 97-98. We won the league on the last day of the season. That was down to the wire. We won the league in the last day of the season. You know, we're looking now at that league table. We're already out of the Champions League. We're already out of the Europa League. We're 21 points behind Rangers. A Rangers side who, you know, they're going out and they're, they're grinding out results at Tanadice. They're grinding out results at Pataudry. And we, we, you know, have lost 16 goals in the last 20 minutes of matches, Kevin. It's a terrible record, yet we can't manage a game out. So on the one hand, you're sitting and you're preparing to, to give as much positive kind of comments as you can for all the young guys who were in there that done a job. But then we chuck it, we throw it. And, you know, the, the, the season, let's be honest, the season was already over. Yeah, not mathematically, but it was already over. I mean, yeah, that would have just been delaying the inevitable. Had we won that game, won nothing tonight. So you're looking at Peter Lobo. What was I thinking? I was just thinking, why? Why haven't you acted on this? You're meant to be a powerful CEO of a club who tries to sell itself as an elite Champions League football club, Kevin. You know, and this last season, and for several seasons leading up to it, because we know that when the rot started, we know that we started to refuse to develop when a manager wanted us to push us to the next level and we refused to do it. And we know all the reasons uh, behind that. But we're now out of three competitions. We're 21 points behind in the league. It's not going to happen. You know, Rangers are not going to clap, Celtic are not going to put a run of results together because it's not just the COVID issues, it's everything that could go wrong. We have, we have created it. it you know, you can have these uh, paranoid ideas about it's everybody else's fault. And as I say, somehow they, they actually tend to believe, some Celtic fans tend to believe that it's our fault. It's our fault that that's happened. Do you honestly think that the comments that we make on this podcast are creating the issues on the field of play? These have existed all season, Kevin. So you said at the beginning, um, actually this afternoon, that you expected a resignation from the CEO. It's not going to happen. They're going to ride this out. How can they ride it out? I mean, this is... 
how how can they be so blinkered to see this is not the end? How can they not actually be sitting there thinking tonight, going, by the way, we there's nothing we can do now. There is nothing we can do. There's nothing that we can we can nothing that we can do. Nothing that we can say will absolutely save face of this season. I mean, what we've got left this season now, but yeah, you're right, we could we could maybe make a decent fist to the Scottish Cup. But the reason that we're bringing on guys like Ewan Henderson tonight, the reason that we're bringing on guys like Oko Flex tonight for their debut, the reason we're bringing on Kar- Karamoko Dembele is because we've got 13 first-team players isolating because they went to Dubai on a jolly. That is the bottom line. And the bottom line is the two guys, three guys, four guys, whoever it is, who rubber stamped that trip to Dubai should should be getting their jotters. They should actually be man enough to go, by the way, we done this. Will they do it? Will they fight? Will they heck? They won't do it. I says I says yesterday, Paul, that you were going to need to jump in a fridge if we drop points tonight. It doesn't matter what the Celtic board do. You, you're you're running about the same age as me. I'm slightly older, but do you remember the nuclear nuclear warming films that used to get in the eighties mm-hmm. when they used to, when they used to tell you to take your 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 living room door off and and like put it up against the wall and that uh, hide behind it and it's going to survive if you have a nuclear blast. That's the Celtic board. They'll be sitting behind a an old front door. They'll be sitting behind an old front door in the living room going, ah, it's all right, we're going to survive this. We're going to survive this. And won't they know so, honey? Cockroaches might. Kevin, the big problem I've got here is the signs have been present for a long time. This has not been because of the, the Dubai. That was just to add insult to injury. You know, the the, the issues that we have at this club are deep-rooted. Um, they go beyond the, the Neil Lennon tenure, which in actual fact tonight was the 100th game since Neil Lennon came back. I called it earlier on a collective omni-shambles. That's exactly what it is. Because you look at the, the state of the team, uh, Joe Porter's coming in, um, and criticising, like, rightly, Laxo. What was he thinking? Um, we've also got uh, Francie W. Hazard replicates his cup final flap and cancels out a terrific free kick from Turnbull. It was a, a moment of magic by David Turnbull. Still credit to our makeshift team for their efforts. But we're looking at a side now, Kevin, that, yeah, they, they had a run of six games leading up to the Rangers game. But all I'm hearing, uh, the argument that I'm hearing when I'm criticising Celtic is... This is a side that won a quadruple treble. This is a side that won nine in a row. And it's almost as if people are closing their eyes to the predicament that we find ourselves in now. That's a club, Hibs, who are not that far behind Celtic. You know, in terms of the form uh, and players coming back into the side, we're obviously going to go into a game against Livingston, who, in actual fact, are one of the on-form sides in the league. And we're playing them twice. And, you know, historically, we don't fancy going to Livingston and playing away from home, Kevin. So, you know, I look at the, the four fixtures in January after the Rangers game for both clubs and I wasn't taking it for granted but you're thinking they, that must be winnable Hibs, Livy, Livy Hamilton you must be able to come through that with maximum points but Celtic find a way to completely blow it They do and I mean you always knew this was brewing eh? today when that announcement came out that there was going to be 13 players um, Thirteen players isolated, and obviously we got the fault. We got we got the false list, and you always kind of knew. You know how that squad is built. You know how that squad is built. Julian's best pal is Eddie, so there's no way that Eddie's not going to be one of them that's isolating. There's no way that any the other French boy uh, in Champs not going to be isolating either, because and that's just the way that the group works. Now, Tom, Tom English says Tom English says that after on that earlier on that they done the isolation by the flight manifest. So where they were sitting on the plane home on Friday, the fact that they were on the plane is the absolute problem. The fact that we're sitting here with with it over, if it wasn't over before, it's definitely over now, is because we got on a plane and went to Dubai. That's it, bottom line. Gross incompetence. Gross mismanagement. Gross incompetence. You should actually be getting put in front of a firing squad. The Hague should be actually having a look at it for war crimes. It is that bad. Kev, when you're looking at the situation, and I look at Celtic because over the last nine years, almost a decade of domination, Celtic have set the standards. Now, you... 
have been criticised for being negative uh, whilst we were in the, the, the throes of the quadruple treble because you were identifying things that were wrong at the club from recruitment to youth development to managerial appointments. You were criticising the club during these points and during these times but success masks a million deficiencies and I keep saying that but Celtic were setting the standards or should have been setting the standards we have access to the facilities and to the finance that you know are, are really the envy of any other club in Scottish football yet we have abused that we've abused it by going to Dubai that's what we've done we should be setting the standards yet we are the, the club that has been referenced time and time again embarrassingly so by the First Minister by Nicola Sturgeon I mean to drag Celtic's name through the mud like that again our fault the club's fault Kevin not Nicola Sturgeon's fault you know people coming up with a, some kind of she's got an agenda she's trying to um, you know take the focus away from something else that's on going are you kidding me Celtic have messed this up ourselves and you know it is unforgivable I'm not about to put anybody in front of a firing squad but I feel that it's unforgivable Kevin and you know you've got to also ask yourself a footballer gets hit down with Covid we've heard loads of stories of people you, you know there's still this kind of fallacy about Covid only affects vulnerable the old and vulnerable and the infirm that's a nonsense. Uh, you know, there's a matter of time before one of these footballers is seriously affected by COVID. Where's the duty of care when you're taking Julien away when he doesn't have to be there? The point was made earlier by Chris Sutton as well. You don't, you don't have to take Julien on, on that trip. He's injured for three to four months, Kevin. Where's the duty of care if that affects his career, if it affects his health in such a way, you know, that he has some kind of long-term effect of COVID? We've put him at risk. It's a disgrace. It's an absolute disgrace from top to bottom. We've put the eye, right, OK, I didn't want to put anybody in front of a firing squad and I didn't want to put any more crimes is a bit harsh as well. I'll admit that, I'll admit that. Um, but the decision-making needs investigated at the highest level. The decision-making at the football club needs investigated at the higher level. We've put elite so-called, well, it is called elite sport because we're still playing it. We we put so-called elite sportsmen in, in, like, in a situation that they shouldn't be in against a, a virus that nobody really knows the long-term effects of yet. We've heard effects of some young people that still been not fit six, seven months after they've had the virus. There's been a, a, a duty of care to these staff, um, which has been overshadowed. I've been banging on for years that we, we are the biggest small-time club in the world and that's what we are. We're a big small-time club. We're run, we're run on the back of a fag packet and now that has came home to roost. Kevin, there is a, a common parlance in Scottish football terms whereby if someone spectacularly fails, uh, they've hibsed it and I think Celtic are rewriting that. They're going to have to rewrite it because, you know, we have completely um, out-hibsed hibs this season and every single thing that we've touched. Now, just because we followed protocols, I'm sorry, it doesn't justify uh, going and, uh, and taking that trip to Dubai. Uh, we keep getting told by people who, for me, are just apologists. They're Peter Lobel wet dreams. Yeah, you know, but it's done as good in the past and, you know, we could go on a run. Well, there you go. There's your first performance after Dubai. There's your first performance tonight. Lacking invention, lacking creativity. Yes, we had uh, a depleted team out there tonight, Kevin, but we should have um, enough on that part to win at Celtic Park. Um, the Dubai uh, debacle will haunt us for the rest of the season. It's not going to be the turning point. You know, people are clutching at straws with that. You talk about the Scottish Cup. Will the Scottish Cup even get completed this season already? Um, fixtures are, are being cancelled or sorry postponed throughout the month of January and yet still Celtic fail to engage with the fans <laughs> they always do Paul they always do fail to engage with the fans and they have always failed to engage with the fans since probably since the, the share issue uh, right the, the share issue what, what is Derma Desmond going to do what's Derma Desmond sitting there thinking Derma Desmond's a kingmaker in all of this. Is his relationship with Law? Can he see? Can he now see what everybody else sees? 
has there been has there been a breakdown in communication between Dermot Desmond and Peter Law? I mean, basically we were getting told that Desmond was backing Neil Lennon. Well, you can't back Neil Lennon now. You mm. cannot back Neil Lennon. A football decision on and off the park has cost this league title. Has completely cost this league title. And at the precise moment in time, I'm struggling to see a way back for us for years, unless swift action is taken. And I'm no, and I'm sitting here. For, I'm, I know for a fact that swift action is not going to be taken. I know for a fact we're going to plod along. We'll maybe release a, an email the more going, oh, keep the faith, everything's going to be great. Um, we've, we've took £25 off the new home jerseys. Is it all Adidas' fault, actually? Is it Adidas' fault? We've waited all this time for Adidas jerseys and they're, and they're turning... I tell you, I didn't like that orange collar. Now, I always son about that or, orange collar. Um, but the, Dermot Desmond's got to actually take control of this situation now. He has, he has, he's got to take control of that situation now. And I wonder I wonder how long, and I'm going to call them moon bowlers, I wonder how long it will be long b- b- before these guys who are the cult of, you can't say nothing wrong about Celtic football, come jump on this and go, aye, we've still got eight, 18 games left. This can happen, that can happen. We're going to go to Livingston on Saturday with probably Oco Flex up front. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. They guys get my full support. I've got no, I've got no, no beef with they guys on that part tonight. No beef whatsoever. They made the mistakes, but they should never have been put in that position. And the reason they've been put in that position is because of gross mismanagement. I think, you know, I've, I've been talking about the contemptuous approach to the fans. There's also been a contemptuous approach, Kevin, to covid and that's why we flew to to Dubai and the only thing uh, that's been matched by that approach is the contempt shown to the support and I think that you know when they're looking at the um, you know season tickets and we've spoken about this Kevin a season ticket for many is a necessity isn't it it's something that um, you work it into your uh, your annual expenditure uh, never questioned you know you always say that you know justifying it to your wife when you've got a couple of kids etc never questioned it's just part of life and then you know then in situations like this where everybody's cutting their cloth accordingly uh, then becomes a desirable to buy a Celtic season ticket but then and this is a worrying thing when you're being treated with that level of contempt to buy the Celtic board it then becomes a luxury and that's when a 54,000 season ticket sale um, spreadsheet drops dramatically and that's where we're heading that, that's where we are heading uh, we are heading for this it's I've been talking about goodwill and I say after we, we won the, the quadruple treble that was an end of an era at that point and the next six weeks were all about building goodwill going into the fall and going into next season that goodwill's completely evaporated and I, I can't see how they're going to get it back I really can't see how they're going to get it back unless they throw money at a manager and say we're completely ripping up and starting again what, what we're actually doing and they're not going to do that they're not going to do that and just because that's what we don't do financially that's what a major shareholder doesn't do financially but we're, we're not going to get taken up with well, all of a sudden, we're not going to actually start paying millions for another manager. That's not, 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 not going to happen. I must admit, see the night, Hibs are playing against a weakened Celtic side, but I could see the way Hibs played. I could, I could see the Hibs system. I could see what they were trying to do. I couldn't see what we were trying to do. We were just hoping one of our good players actually were, done something great and got us, got us into a position to win the game. And mm-hmm. that nearly happened. That nearly happened with Tur- Turnbull. Put Dubai to the back of our mind. We've been poorly coached all season. We look completely unfit and we get out tactic if that's even a phrase, every game, nearly every game that we play. We get schooled mm-hmm. nearly every game that we play. And that's down, that's down to poor coaching. The regression in 18 months has been utterly frightening. Mm-hmm. And the chief executive has done nothing to stop that regression. regression. It utterly, it actually encouraged that regression when he appointed Neil Lennon in the shower. Between now, Kevin, uh, because we're coming to a close, between now and Saturday's game against the on form Livingston, would you expect anything coming out of the club when you consider what's happened in the last seven days? No. No, I, I, I would not. I think if anything, 
is going to happen, if anything is going to happen, we'll see John Kennedy taking mayor press conferences for now at the end of the season. And, but what about the the people, as you say, you say two or three people are probably responsible. There's one person who is responsible for signing off such things as um, an expensive trip to Dubai, uh, which uh, could only be done if we moved a fixture when there's already a fixture backlog, and that person's Peter Lowell. So at what point is Peter Lowell actually going to come out and address the Celtic support? Because it's long overdue, Kevin, and we're now at a stage where it's never been worse this season. When's he going to come out and explain his narrative, explain his thinking, apologise for what's happened this season? Wally, has he apologised for it? Uh, anything that's happened over over his tenure? I remember, I've, I've told the story before and I'll tell it again. I remember he, he turned up to the... Uh, the leap, I know it was the Grange Manor and Grangemouth with Neil Lennon when they were doing the road shows to try and get us to buy into uh, giving uh, Neil, Neil Lennon the job. And the first question of the night, the first question of the night was somebody stood up and asked Peter Wall when he was resigning for appointing Tony Mowbray. That was the first question of the night. And he didn't apologise, he laughed it off. And uh, He's been the same ever since. As I says, as I says last last Monday, Rangers would be putting a, as well putting a statue of Peter Wall outside Ibrox and putting Rory Bremner underneath it because that was his quit. No, remember in 2012 in the AGM, mm-hmm. like Rory, Rory Bremner does impressions. Well, Peter Wall, you've you've made us do a great impression of a big football club this season. Yeah, the, the comments are coming in and, uh, you know, you've got to, to take them on board and nothing will happen, nothing. That's why I asked the question because that's ex- exactly what I would expect to happen. But, you know, what you've got to do um, is it's Nicola Sturgeon's fault any, anything to punish us Nicola Sturgeon had nothing to do with Celtic uh, going to Dubai, that was a decision that the club made and they've seen it through and you know to try and look for blame elsewhere is absolutely preposterous, Celtic need to take responsibility and they need to own it and part of that ownership is by addressing the fans but um, you know I don't think anybody who's tuning in and by the way uh, three and a half thousand live Celtic supporters and quite a few from the other side of Glasgow tuning in tonight so thank you all for your support and if you haven't already please get onto YouTube and subscribe because we do subscribe uh, sorry we do broadcast uh, on a daily basis Uh, so yes uh, another disappointing night in a very very disappointing season where we've gone from quadruple treble winners to potentially nothing Absolutely nothing, Kevin. So I need to thank you once again, Kevin, for joining me on a Celtic Stay in Mind. Thanks for everybody for joining us. We'll be back at 12.30 tomorrow for the Axon Bulletin, and I'll chat to you all then.